All right, two weeks ago, I did an unboxing video where I was very excited about this 18 millimeter lens. In that two weeks, I've taken almost 300 photos with it. Well, I have taken over 300 photos with it if you count uh, the ones that I threw away. <laughs> so this is my first impressions. It's not a review because I haven't had it long enough to really review it, but I do feel like I've had it long enough and I've used it enough to give you some initial thoughts on the lens. So that's what this video is, is my initial first thoughts about this lens. So the first thing that I wanna cover is just where it fits in my lineup. Currently I have the 35 millimeter 1.4, which was made by Fujifilm a long time ago. It's been over 10 years that it's been out. One of my favorite lenses, I still love it. But as you can see from these lenses, it's the bulkiest of the bunch. In the next size down, <laughs> these aren't in order of uh, focal distance, they're just size. Uh, I have the 23 millimeter f 1.2 from Voigtlander, which is a fantastic little manual lens. I've actually grown to like it quite a bit. That's that's one of the reasons I was so excited about this 18 millimeter. Then in the middle here, I've got the uh, <laughs> 50 millimeter TT Artisan. It is a F2 lens. It is a really great build quality, completely manual. There's no connectors or anything on it to inform the camera what aperture I have or any of those things. I also have the 27 millimeter 2.8 is a pretty great lens. You know, I, I've been using this for a while and now I have this 18 millimeter Voigtlander 2.8. So let me get into some of the details here. This is an f2.8, and the reason I didn't shy away from the f2.8 is because this 27 millimeter f2.8 has been wonderful for me, and I've gotten some of the best shots I've ever taken with it. I really enjoy this lens, and f2.8 has not been a problem for me. It has not been a problem for me at night. In fact, one of my best photos from 2023 was a photo of a gas station at dusk with a storm coming, and it was a great photo. So f2.8 is not anything I'm worried about. First thing I want to talk about with the build quality of this lens is it feels very solid while also being ridiculously lightweight. So it's an all metal build or feels all metal. I mean, I guess there could be plastics on here, but um, it definitely feels all metal. The uh, dampening on the aperture ring is really clicky, which I like every single stop clicks into place. All, even the stops between like eight and 11, eight and 5.6, really nice. Compare that to the focus ring, which is smooth as silk. I mean, it is so nice how it focuses. I, I just, I really like Voigtlander's lenses for manual focus because they, you know, they put some care into that, how, how smooth it is. One of the things that I've noticed is when I'm at um, infinity to one meter on the focal distance, it's really shallow. So. So pulling the tab goes from infinity to one very fast, but then from one to its nearest focal distance, which is 0 0.17 meters, uh, it's about six inches, six and a half inches from the end of the camera. That is the longer pull on, on this. So I find that a little odd, but um, I'm getting used to it. So going from, from infinity to one is like you barely have to move your finger. Speaking of moving your finger, this tab is located right where you press the button to release the lens. And unfortunately, I have noticed that it's a little hard to locate when you're you know, just bringing the camera to your face. It's hard to find the tab with your finger. I've gotten somewhat used to holding my camera kind of like this when I'm using this lens. So I, I'm getting better at, at locating it with my finger, but I felt like I should probably point that out that there is a little bit of a disappearing act. Other than that, build quality is great, size is great. Another thing that I'm doing is I am doing a 365 day project, meaning one single photo a day for 365 days. And so for the purposes of this, I got myself this little alpaca sling. You know, I get this situated on myself and you'll see that this camera fits in this alpaca bag perfectly you know like an x100v would fit in here a rico and this has been pretty nice unfortunately none of my other lenses will fit except for the 27 millimeter so what i do for everyday carry is i put this in here up and down like this and i put the 27 millimeter in here like that so in this bag 
I now have a 28 millimeter equivalent focal length and a 40 millimeter equivalent focal length. I like that for everyday carry. It's, it's really easy to take and um, you know, I can put an extra battery in here. I think I have an extra battery and an SD card reader for my phone. That's been a nice part about this. That's actually one of the reasons I wanted to get another pancake was uh, for this everyday carry business that I'm doing. <laughs> Now, getting some of those specifics out of the way, the build quality, why I got it, how it fits in my lineup, what, you know, what I was thinking when I, when I got it. Now I wanna talk a little bit about the images I get from it. One of the problems that I have with the 28 millimeter focal length is really illustrated here. So this is a photo of me walking my dog. He is not as far as it appears in this image. And that is really the essence <laughs> of what, I have trouble with with the 28 millimeter focal length. This is why I wanted it. This is why I wanted to practice with it because it's this distortion that I need to learn how to utilize and harness. And that's that's what I'm after. You know, that's what I want to do. So when I talk about these photos, keep in mind that it's not necessarily the lens. It could very well be my technique. So here I was just playing around in a grocery store. And one of the reasons I wanted to take this photo was there's a lot going on going down the aisle. You know, this really shows the strength of the 28 millimeter, all that information on the sides. Some other nice discoveries was it did a pretty good job at six and a half inches at, it, at its minimum focal distance. You know, I, I feel like it does a pretty good job with separation. There's, um, I don't see any aberrations on the sides here. I don't pixel peep very often. I'm doing it pretty much for this first impressions, but from a first impressions standpoint, I was on a walk with the dog. I saw these beautiful flowers, you know, spring is coming and I wanted to get a photo of the flower with separation and I got it. So, you know, again, F 2.8, not a problem. Perfectly acceptable for a pancake lens. Uh, I, I really like that I could get down and, you know, get that shot. So <clears throat> I don't know why I'm choking so bad here. I, I feel like I've never done video before. All right, so here's one that's really great. Uh, you know, I saw this, the, the sun was reflecting off this sign and somebody had put this skull sticker on here. And there's, there's a lot of detail going on here. You can see my reflection in the black. You can see all the detail in the sign. There's, you know, tons of detail in this sign. And it got it throughout the whole image from top to bottom, left to right. Really good detail in all the spots. And I was, maybe a foot, foot and a half away from it. I'm getting better at, at this focal distance, for sure. Another one of the images that I'd, I'd like to share with you is this one. I think this really speaks to the strength of a 28 millimeter lens. I was really close to this wall. There was, there was um, just on the other side of this drive down here is another building. So I couldn't really get far away to get this shot. And that's what I really loved about uh, being able to take this with this lens at night. You know, I think I'm at F4. Great detail throughout, great light, great color. It's not following off in the corners or anything. I'm using that sort of distortion of the 28 millimeter focal length to, to kind of focus your attention down the wall. And, and I think that's the strength of, of this focal distance. I'm just, again, I really stink at it. <laughs> you know, the images that I've taken with it, it's it's a solid performer. I, I feel very confident with it at night. I I get great feedback from the lens into the camera. I can, I can use the EVF to see my electronic focal distance. And like I said, it's super fast at the end and then it slows way down as I'm approaching the minimal focal distance. So I've just been really happy with this lens so far. So stick around to the channel, you know, subscribe. Uh, I would say I'll probably do a follow-up to this lens and maybe two months, six weeks, somewhere in there where I've really had a chance to test it and make sure that it's, you know, meeting all my needs. That's my first impressions of two weeks with this lens, almost 300 images. Uh, so far, it's been great. So far, it's done exactly what I wanted from it, which what more can you ask for? And uh, stick around. I'm gonna do some more. I just, <laughs> yeah, as always, I thank you so much for watching. I hope that you enjoyed it and I hope to see you in the next one. Thanks, bye.